And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Orleans Hotel and Casino here in Las Vegas, Nevada, we present a special attraction, three three-minute rounds, this bout, a women's bout, for the 125-pound Tough Enough Championship. Our referee for this contest will be Mark Smith. Introducing first, she fights out of the blue corner. She entered the ring wearing black and white. Her record, unbeaten. She has six bouts, six victories, no losses. Representing Team Hard Target from Charlotte, North Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Jenny Young. And her opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. She's wearing the black and red trunks. She too is unbeaten inside the ropes. Two victories, no losses. Representing West Coast Fight Club from Bellingham, Washington. Introducing Stephanie Agin. The title is on the line, ladies and gentlemen. Two fighters very hungry to walk away with the Tough Enough belt that can scream. I am a serious fighter and I deserve a contract when I go pro from a meaningful organization as these fighters embark on their professional careers and I'm sure just a few fights from now this could be a huge moment for them. If nothing else bragging rights, possibly a big bargaining chip to set up a very successful professional career. You know, it's interesting as you ask these these ladies and these fighters and so forth who their favorite fighters are. Isn't it interesting that Stephanie puts down Muhammad Ali? <laughs> Well, that's how you can tell that she has a, ba uh, a boxing background is because she looks up to Muhammad Ali as somebody that is her favorite old school fighter. President, we apologize for the delay. We do have to wait for the ringside physician to be present. He is in the back with another fighter. As soon as he comes to ringside, we'll get started with our championship now. Title is on the line, ladies and gentlemen. Jenny Hume is wearing the black and the white. Stephanie Egging is wearing the red and the black. This fight is three three-minute rounds with the title on the line. Jenny Hume does possess power again. We talked about the two quick stoppages she's earned in her career. But Egging with the boxing background and the reach in this fight. It'll be interesting to see if she can stay on the outside and, and strike from there. Future stars of MMA, you're looking at it right now, ladies and gentlemen. As we said, a big moment in their amateur careers that could parlay into something big as professionals. Yeah, Eggie has a nice body lock there, but struggling a little bit with the trip. Finally does get the outside trip. I like it, though. She stuck with it. You know, she didn't give up on it. They really maintain control of her opponent with that body lock around the waist. That was very intelligent. Did have a little difficulty getting the trip. Couldn't seem to get the inside, the outside. Finally secured the outside, and she's going to set up in top position. Again, we've got the three-minute rounds. The fighters have been fighting two-minute rounds up to this point, so we'll see if fatigue plays any factor if this thing goes into the second and third round. I'm a little bit surprised that Stephanie decided to take this fight to the ground because Egging, uh, you know, she's a boxer. That, that's where her background lies. I don't know if she's trying to make a statement here by taking Jenny Hume down and just saying, hey, look, I can control this fight no matter where it goes, but... That did surprise me when she went for and stuck with that trip as opposed to, you know, creating a little bit of distance and trading some punches. Yeah, I think in this tournament she has shown some, some grinding ability, some ground skills, some submission skills. She does have those long legs. Obviously, Ryan Couture in her corner has probably helped her with a trick or two. I imagine. She does have Jenny Hume stacked up here in the corner. A little bit more flexibility than you have if you're fighting in a cage. Jenny Hume can kind of free your head a little bit, and in some ways you can actually stick your head under that rope a little bit and avoid catching any strikes from the top position. Or that right there. Stephanie Egging went to pick up Jenny Hume and slam her down, and I don't know if it was intentional or unintentional by Jenny, but she ended up getting her head caught a little bit in the rope, and it, it stopped that slam from being effective. Egging here looking good early on in round number one. Two minutes is off the clock. 
About 60 seconds left in this opening round. Uh, you looked for an arm bar briefly, but Eggy felt it right away, stepped out and away from it, and now is advanced. She's got the right leg over. She's in half mount. Three three-minute rounds. 125-pound title is on the line. Stephanie Egink is wearing the red and the black. Jenny Hume on the bottom right now wearing the black and the white. You know, it's interesting when you look through Hume's career, her two stoppages both came very quickly. Perhaps Egink is coming to this fight saying, hey, I want to strike later, but I want to try to, to, to navigate that early storm, maybe tire Hume out a little bit. Interesting. That's a good point, John. You looking to secure the lamp? Thank you, dude. No, I, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't think about strategy like you do, apparently. That, that would be a good strategy. Yoon here with a bit of a reversal. Now she's on top. Final moments here of round number one. And there's that triangle oh, choke. Man. Could it be deep? She used it to finish earlier in the tournament. Tough to see the angle, and she survives until the bell. Oh, but that leaves a little bit of an exclamation point. I'm sure in Jenny Hume's mind, no matter where this fight goes on the ground, even fighting from her back, Stephanie Egging is going to threaten. Let's see if there's a different strategy coming out in round number two. Yeah, great round from Stephanie Egging there. Again, got the body lock early. We thought she might want to strike from the outside, but she decided she wanted to go for that trip. She secured it after a little bit of struggle. Did a great job from top position. Hume, solid. Off from the bottom, tried to secure that leg, used it to sweep the top position, but then found herself in a little bit of danger with the triangle choke attempt. Here we can see Yoon threatening the leg underneath, used it as an opportunity to sweep and get to top position. But again, we talked about the triangle choke finish that uh, Egging had earlier in the tournament, and she showed those long legs and how quickly she can transition them up top. I was watching Jenny Yoon in her corner there in between rounds, and she still looks very fresh. Her corner was giving her instructions, very alert, listening to what they were saying. And she comes out swinging here to open up round number two. She came out swinging, throwing some nice power shots, but you could see the technical ability of Stephanie Egging, I think, with the nice head movement and the counter shots. And again, Egging is trying for this body lock. Oh, and gets swept all the way over. Oh, Great man. sense of balance by Ginny Yoon, who Jenny actually Yoon. had the underhooks there and rolled all the way through to get to top position and the mount. And there is a full two minutes and 30 seconds left in this round. This is a terrible position for Stephanie Egging. If you can maintain this position, she can really create some damage. You can see Egging underneath holding her opponent tight, trying to keep Yoon from posturing up and raining down blows. She's also shucking those hips underneath, trying to find a way to escape, kicking those legs up. Nice flexibility to see if she can get the sweep with those legs. Yoon trying to kick those off. She's going to pop out the back door here. Oh, man. Stephanie Egging is going to pop out what the back door. flexibility. Unbelievable. And she reverses it. Looking for a mount herself, she ends up in the full guard of Jenny Yu. But wow, what a display of flexibility. The former boxer showing the ground prowess once again. Found herself in a terrible position, but kept the action closed. Didn't absorb too much damage. Popped out the back door. Now she's going to work from the guard. Here's Yume rolling yeah. out to the side, going to try to attack the arm. Legs are creeping up quite a bit there. A couple of options when your legs start getting up there. Like you said, John, looking for an arm, possibly for a triangle. Ends up settling for a closed guard again. Stephanie Egink in the red and the black trunks. Jenny Yume wearing the black and the white. She's on the bottom right now, and again, the legs creep up. Egink doing a good job of, of keeping the balance, pushing down. Preventing those legs from sliding out, but those legs are very, very high. And there comes oh. the left leg across the face. The arm is in trouble here. Stephanie Egging doing a great job of securing her own right arm, defending well. Now, 35 seconds left. Now, in Jenny Yoon round. might want to pop her head out if she can get flat. Egging trying to step over. And she does. Nice calculated moves from Egging. Knows where she needs to go. Figuring out how to get there. You still maintaining control of the arm. Oh man, this could be. Stephanie Egging could be in trouble here. You see Jenny Yum sitting back trying to crank. Difficult to tell the position on the arm. egging has got her seconds. own leg over there. It looks like the elbow is pointed the wrong way now. Stephanie Egging did a great job of defending that. 